Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we're going to plasma cut and fiber etch some custom donkeys. Now what you see here is 304 stainless steel. It's 12 gauge, which is roughly a little less than 1 8 or a little bit less than 3 millimeters thick. And it's plasma cut with the machine you see behind me here. Now the project spec for this is to make about 70 of these and they're all the same so it doesn't really matter if they're the same or different but in this case here they're all the same. And what you see here on the marking is actually fiber laser etching. The nice thing about fiber laser etching is permanent meaning it won't fade, crack or peel or come off you know, ever. And I've actually had some jobs where I had to remove this uh, because I screwed up and let me tell you it takes about half an hour with an angle grinder. It's not any fun and you end up scrapping the whole piece anyways. So before we start plasma cutting this, the th first thing we're going to do is actually going to make a jig. And it's an MDF jig using the laser to cut it out and it's 1 8 or 3 millimeters thick. to yourself, I'm going to plasma cut a whole bunch of donkeys, why would I make a jig using my laser? Well, you know, what's the point of that? And the point is, there's several points to it. The first one is, I have some scrap in the shop that I like to use uh, to optimize the design. Uh, for the prototype of this, I just made one version of it and I sent it to the customer and they loved it. But there's some room for optimization, especially when you're cutting a whole whack of them compared to cutting just one. And the second reason, other than the optimization, is you'll notice that there's a few holes in here. Now there's one hole here, which is the central point, and there's a hole here which I'll drill later, and another one here. So they'll put screws into the wall to hold it. Now this point here is very, very important. That's the central location of this whole uh, model. And when you're going through scrap, this is a lot more efficient to place things. So let me just show you for example, here I'll use another scrap piece of MDF. So we have a piece of MDF here with some stuff on it and we want to, let's say in this case here it's stainless steel, but I want to plasma cut out a donkey. Now I can do a whole bunch of calculations, figure all this stuff out, or I can just tell this my plasma cutter, cut based on a central point and cut out the shape. And that's exactly what I did. So it's a no-brainer way of cutting out shapes when you have you know, various pieces of scraps that are different sizes, different shapes, all that kind of stuff to deal with. And of course with different cutouts because you also don't want to cut out over another cutout uh, because that basically just creates more scrap. So once the design is optimized for speed and the final results, it's time to go into actual production. Here's one of the sheets here, and it's still kind of heavy, uh, so I'll just leave it there, but you can sort of see on the video that I've pretty much uh, nested as many donkeys as I possibly could on this sheet of material. Now something to keep in mind with uh, the plasma cutter, unlike a laser or a water jet, is that with the plasma cutter you've got to worry about grounding. Um, I like to give 
give myself a lot of room around parts. And the reason for that is because I want to make sure I have a solid grounding throughout the whole sheet. Especially when you're cutting out a whole bunch of holes into it, you're affecting the grounding even, you know, just a little bit in one section over another section. But if you have tons of metal left over, and this is tons, but relatively speaking, I didn't waste any material, uh, then you have a lot better results with the plasma cutter. donkeys come right off the plasma cutter they look like this here and I'll show you a comparison between the two so there's quite a difference this one is a screw up that's why you see the hole there and the back off the plasma again looks really dirty that's my finger points taking off the, the crap on there and you can see the back side of this one is totally fine now how do I get from this to this well the first step of that is actually just cleaning it up uh, so that involves using the angle grinder and a bunch of other tools. Uh, so I set up a little workstation for myself on my CNC router because I needed a large table to handle all of this weight. And that's the best table for it. And I, of course, clean it up afterwards with the, with, the, uh, with the router so it doesn't really show a mess any at all once I'm done. So what I'm doing here is the first step is I'm drilling the holes. So these are 3 16 So they're perfect for a drill to just drill right into the wall. And of course, you don't have the hole in the middle because that was just a reference for the plasma cutter. It wasn't something I actually wanted to do on the actual model. Now you might say, well, why don't I just use the plasma cutter to cut out the holes, as you see here. It saved me a lot of time. 
Well, yes and no. Uh, when you're going to really, really small, fine holes, uh, the plasma cutter really isn't the best tool for that. I can cut, you know, three quarter inch holes all day, no problem at all. But three sixteenths is kind of pushing it, especially when you have a lead in and a lead out. Uh, so I just prefer to use the drill press to do that. So what happens when you do the drill press is that you end up creating a burr at the bottom because you're basically pushing and drilling through the stainless steel. You get the same thing with the water jet too, by the way. Uh, so what you have to do afterwards is use the angle grinder to remove the burr. After that, I use the regular wood sander. Uh, it does an amazing job creating a really nice finish on stainless steel. And I've been using it for years and um, I just love the, the result of it with the orbital. If you look at it closely, you can maybe see the scratches from the orbital. But it's very minor and it just looks fantastic close up. So after all of that is done, I put it into the sorting bin. And the next step after that will be to clean all of these things up. study to show you the synergy of having multiple machines together. One is great for a table, the CNC router, one's great for making jigs, the laser, and one's great for actually cutting the metal, which is the plasma cutter. So his, right here is the jig that I use for the fiber etching. So this here fits right inside of here. And the reason I did that is because I have almost 70 of these to do, and I don't want to have to use my brain to organize all of them properly in the right position. So I have a program to cut this out on the, on the laser. And then this fits perfectly inside. So my X and Y, all the placement is dead on perfect. And what I've learned over the years is you want to make things as brain dead as possible, especially when going to production. You know, doing one or two of these things by eye, no problem. Try doing 70, you start to go nuts pretty quick. So what I'm doing here is staggering them. And you might be wondering, why don't I just line them up like this, like this, like this, like this? 
Well, fiber laser etching is a very slow process. It's a very methodical process. And any kind of space that you're passing over, like here, for instance, and here, you're wasting time. And you're wasting quite a bit of time when you're doing this many units. So by staggering it, I'm able to have, let me just put this down here. I'm able to do the fiber etching here, and then it goes down a notch, fiber etching here, down a notch, fiber etching here, down a notch, fiber etching here. And believe it or not, that is tremendously faster than having them all lined up and having the laser go like this and wasting a lot of movement over area that doesn't have any fiber etching needs. So production with a fiber laser is a pretty straightforward process. Once the jig is made, you line them up, you put them in there and you do the fiber etching right off the bat. Now a couple of things to keep in mind with fiber etching is that the plate does get hot, especially with stainless steel. Uh, when I took these things off the plasma cutter, they're still really, really toasty. Uh, so I had to use gloves to remove them so I could put another sheet on. And with the fiber laser, again, they're pretty toasty. Now you might be wondering, why do you use 1 8 uh, stainless steel? And the reason for that is because of the fiber laser, not because the plasma can't handle it. Uh, this machine can handle up to two inches thick of steel, so there's no issue there at all. So the problem is with the fiber is that this gets so hot is that it starts to warp on you. And I've had that happen on a few jobs. And what I realized is that I prefer to go thicker and not have any warping issues whatsoever due to heat than to go thinner and then have to redo jobs. Because once metal starts warping, good luck trying to get it back flat. it after fiber lasering I gotta wash all these guys all over again and that for the plasma cutter I'm removing off the dross a little bit with the angle grinder and that kind of stuff in the sander but with the fiber laser what I'm doing is etching into the steel and I'm changing the chemical composition of it but it's still all steel so when I do that there's getting like you get like a fuzz of stainless steel around it it's the same thing as you know when you're engraving stamps you get the stamp fuzz all around the stamp and it just comes right off with water but again, it's something you gotta do. So after that, I'd put an industrial finish over it so that the etching has a higher visibly, visible angle uh, at all angles. If I don't do that, it's very, you know, you go maybe like this, you won't see it as well, but this sort of gets rid of some of the shine, but also accentuates the contrast created by the fiber laser. The reason why I use the fiber laser instead of 
uh, bonding paste or any other process to do this is that this is permanent. I've had a ton of misery with bonding paste and that kind of stuff and I don't need to deal, deal with it whatsoever. So if you're looking for custom uh, stainless steel, uh, etching, cutting, what have you, contact me at cncra.com. We'll help you design it, we'll cut it out and we'll ship it right to your door.